So we have been talking a lot about herbalism and essential oils on our Facebook page and on my blog. And I have been talking about this stuff for years because it's something that I personally am interested in. Many times you have heard me say or read something I've written that said herbalism and herbs and essential oils were kind of my gateway into homesteading. Uh, the reason for that is because obviously I wanted to live a healthier lifestyle, but I wanted to find an alternative medicine for my son who at the time had asthma, childhood asthma. Since then through our efforts and just through growth and um, uh, the relining of his lungs naturally, he has since grown out of childhood asthma, which is incredible. However, that hasn't stopped me from wanting to go ahead and, and explore herbalism more. So I had a video, <laughs> I recorded a video last week to go along with the blog post that I posted last week. It's called um, Our Herbal Medicine Cabinet. And I somehow, the video just got so long, I just said screw it and I deleted it and last week was just not my week, guys. It just was not my week. <laughs> so I'm starting a new one. I'm going to make this one really short and sweet and to the point because all of the information you need is going to be in that blog. And I'm going to show you what it, that blog looks like on my website. Hold on. This is what it looks like. If you can see it. I don't know. But it's going to have that picture on there. Okay, so you're going to know. There's also a link over to the right hand side that says Our Herbal Medicine Cabinet. So the reason I put this blog post together, this was last Wednesday that I put it together is because every September is my herbalism September. It's my back to school September uh, for me too. And basically every September I take an inventory of our herbal medicine cabinet. I make stuff that needs to be made um, in the prime of harvesting time when it comes to stuff starting and getting ready to die. So I try to do that. Um, and I order everything that we need in bulk. So I order all of my bulk herbs off of Amazon from Star Wars Botanicals. Please buy them from the company, not through a third party source. And then I get all of my essential oils through my essential oil company. Now I rep doTERRA uh, because I believe in their company, I believe in their method, I be they support sustainable farmers. There's a hawk flying over. They, um, they believe in harvesting the plant from its native country, which most other oil companies do not, and that is an extremely important piece of that part of our essential oil. Man, they're really out today. So, um, I really love repping doTERRA for that reason because they believe in sustainable farming, they believe in harvesting plants from their native country, which makes them more pure and more potent, and then they run their business like a homestead. They're debt-free. Um, they just believe in sustainability. That is why I went with doTERRA. Uh, some of you who have followed me for a few years, you're like, oh man, you used to hate doTERRA and Young Living and all that stuff. Yeah, I don't like multi-level marketing companies at all, but um, when a friend actually sat down and she kind of said, here's why I do doTERRA, and then I kind of started researching and realizing, wow, this is really the only company that is run like this, I was like, gosh, yeah, I have to support that. And their oils, compared to the oils I was using before, um, are just very, they're very, I don't know how to explain it, they just work better, okay? Uh, to me, as a homesteader, I feel like it's really very important to have a holistic medicine cabinet. If you're kind of getting back to your roots and you're getting back to simple living, then understanding herbs and essential oils and holistic medicine is really kind of, it just kind of comes along with the perks of being a homesteader. Uh, basically what it boils down to is in a crisis situation or in a situation where you couldn't get out, if there's too much snow on the ground, you couldn't go to the doctor. Or heaven forbid something happen like a government fallout or something where you just didn't have a doctor. Um, how are you going to take care of yourself? You know, food is awesome. Water is awesome. The other things you need to survive. But you can't survive if you get sick. I mean, let's, let's go back to the early, early 1900s and um, even, even not that long ago. Lots of children died because they just weren't healthy and they didn't have the proper kind of medicine. And their parents just didn't know what to do <laughs> you know so um, when I say getting back to my roots I want to go back all the way back okay I want to go back to biblical times I want to go back to um, Native American Indians which we have in our family which we derived from my sister and I my on my grandma's side um, you know I want to go back to those 
people who are really in touch with the land. Okay. Look how many native people have survived off-grid their entire lives, okay? It's still happening today uh, in lesser countries and places where uh, tribes are haven't even been discovered. They're living out in the jungle and, and they're surviving, maybe not to 80, but you know they're surviving because um, they know how to treat wounds and treat themselves holistically and because that's all they have and they're not out of touch with that skill set so I believe that holistic living is a real skill set and a major skill set that you need to kind of consider um, you know it's not for everybody but it's certainly something to think about and look into and kind of grow your knowledge in even just to have knowledge on how to treat symptoms and stuff so disclaimer number one <laughs> Please do not buy your oils from Amazon. Please don't do that. Uh, it has been proven time and time again scientifically that a lot of oils that you can buy on Amazon, you can even read it in the reviews. Um, when people have gotten them, they've been opened already, the seal was broken, uh, they can be filled halfway up with alcohol to, to kind of, you know what I mean, they're a little shady. There are some oil companies that you can buy from on Amazon, but um, it's just not highly suggested by any oil company. Um, that you buy their brand on Amazon. So there are some risks there. If you want to buy oils, please buy through an oil rep or through a third party company like Bulk Apothecary or Mountain Rose Herbs. Both give you the option of where you want the oil to have derived from and that's awesome. That's what's most important. As I said before, the herbs come from Star West Botanicals. I can get them in big one to two pound or even larger bags and kind of just store them in my pantry. Next disclaimer is I am not a medical professional, nor do I claim to be. I believe I have knowledge about herbalism and essential oils, and therefore I'm going to share my knowledge and experiences with you. But uh, I cannot legally sit here and tell you that it's actually going to work, okay? I can't sit here and tell you that this is going to cure this and this is going to cure that. I just can't. I can only tell you our own experiences and what they can help help with easing or curing or uh, prevention. Last disclaimer. If you are unhealthy um, in a way that you have a leaky gut or you're not just you're just not eating healthy, then those are two main things you need to, con to consider before getting into essential oils and herbal remedies. Uh, get your body healthy nutritionally and um, fix that leaky gut if you have one. I would say, you know, probably 50% of our nation in America has a leaky gut. So if you can fix those issues, I think you'll see a lot of your health issues kind of go away. And then herbalism and essential oils can help with other health issues you have that are unrelated. So here's how this video is going to work. I'm going to go through the blog with you really quickly. I'm not going to tell you every single uh, reason we use each herb I list and each essential oil I list. For that reason, you can kind of go to the blog. I'm going to link it below. Lots of information there. Lots of information. Okay. Um, so I don't want to overload you on a 45 minute video. Okay. Um, but I am going to read directly from the blog. I am also, you see this book stack back here. I am going to show you a couple of my favorite books. Not all of them. These are just ones that you could probably find very easily. Um, maybe some you haven't heard of before. All right, so I'm reading from my blog, if you can see it. Our Holistic Medicine Cabinet. All right, I'm gonna go down the essential oils list with you really quickly, and I'm gonna kinda just talk a little bit about each one very quickly. So if I'm reading from this, it's because I'm trying to make this video very quickly. <laughs> All right, so my first essential oil is oregano. It's a natural antibiotic. We use it on animals if they have an infection. Um, it's to prevent an infection. You can use it on cuts and scrapes along with tea tree oil in order to treat and prevent an infection. It also aids in digestive and respiratory issues. Um, I diffuse it, like I'll put it on a rag and hang it in the barn if our animals have respiratory issues or the coop. Um, be careful when putting it on your animals. Animals are obviously much smaller than we are, so the dosage is going to be much less. But it does help. We've used it before and it helps tremendously. Uh, Breathe is a brand specific oil. 
Uh, but basically, it basically uh, it's the very first thing. Breathe is the very first blend oil that I used for my son when he had asthma. So I would diffuse it in his room when he was having an asthma attack or when he was sick. Uh, and it helped. It worked wonders. I was very skeptical at first, but it actually really helped very well. So this is good, um, you know, to put on your chest if you're sick or you have respiratory issues. Peppermint. I use peppermint essential oil all the time. I mean all the time. Um, whether it's warding off ants in my kitchen or cooling a fever, putting it in our homemade toothpaste, which I also link to in the blog. Uh, peppermint aids in digestion and allows easy breathing. Uh, we use peppermint when we have muscle pain or bone pain. I have a kneecap that always kind of comes out of place, and so I put it on my knee to help ease that pain. Um, please be careful with peppermint on children under the age of six. Peppermint can actually slow breathing in children. Uh, we've never had it happen before, but it, you know, it's a possibility, so that's a risk you need to take. Do your research. Do your research. Can't stress that enough, and use that at your own risk. Lavender. I'll be honest, I, I don't like the smell of lavender essential oil, uh, but it does amazing things for my body. It helps me sleep. It helps me rest. If it's a homeschool day and we diffuse it or we um, put it on ourselves, it helps us kind of calm down and do our work. It's also great for bug bites. It, it can soothe um, bug bites. Cedarwood is next. It's widely used in spa settings. The smell is aromatic and calming, but the oil itself aids in healthy and bright skin. Cedarwood promotes hair growth though I'm not trying to grow any hair on my face or anywhere else. Um, it also helps you focus, helps with toothaches, relieves muscle spasms, and more. Next is eucalyptus oil. Again, the same as peppermint. Please do your research before using on small children. Uh, it, uh, eucalyptus aids in respiratory issues. Uh, it promotes easy breathing. You can diffuse it in the winter months if you're kind of feeling stuffy or feel like you're getting sick. Eucalyptus is really great for that. Uh, tea tree or melaleuca is one of our go-to oils. We keep the stuff in bulk, guys. Uh, it's naturally antiseptic, and therefore we keep it on hand in abundance. Uh, we use it in place of harsh alcohol or peroxide when we clean wounds on ourselves or our animals. Um, I've treated bumblefoot and chickens with tea tree oil and oregano oil. I take a wrap and soak the wrap in the oil and then wrap the foot. Do that for a week or so, and the bumblefoot goes away completely. It has. I'm not saying it's curing it, but it has. Melaleuca is also great for skin and scalp. Uh, so if you have dried hair or scalp issues like psoriasis, you can kind of put that in there as well. On Guard is a brand specific oil, uh, but the main oils in the blend are wild orange peel, clove bud, cinnamon, eucalyptus, rosemary. Uh, it builds immunity and keeps the yuckies away. It promotes antioxidant defenses and healthy blood circulation. Terra Shield. This is new for us. My sister-in-law's been using this for years, and I keep meaning to, I kept meaning to get some, but I never did. So this is new for us, and we're keeping it on hand because it works. Um, every homestead has bugs, right? Yeah, we do. Especially mosquitoes this time of year. Goodness, they're gr gross. Uh, so it's, Terra Shield is brand specific as well. It has different kinds of oils in it, um, which you'll read on the blog. Uh, it's perfect alternative to a chemical filled bug spray. So keep some mosquitoes off you when you put it on your skin. You can make a spray out of it. Spray it on your animals. Spray it on your chicken coop. Um, tea tree oil also helps kind of keep bugs away, but the Terra Shield is awesome. It can last up to six hours, so that's even more awesome. Clary Sage. Clary Sage is also new to me. It's something I'm personally getting ready to try. That's why I put it on this list. Um, but I feel like it's very important. Clary Sage is known for its ability to help improve eyesight and eye strain. It's, na it's, <laughs> it's a natural aph aphrodisiac, okay? I don't need that, but it's a painkiller. It's antiseptic, and it regulates blood pressure. That is so important. Um, it helps during menstruation for women. Sorry, guys. Uh, it's extremely powerful okay so if you're a man or a woman with hormone issues kind of kind of do your own research and, and look at that before you start using it frankincense is considered then it's the next one is considered the miracle oil and the king of oils uh, widely because it's known to be used throughout the New Testament Frankincense supports healthy cellular function. We use it on boils and cysts that might, might pop up on my husband's skin. He gets them sometimes. 
Uh, we also use it for general epidermis support and the regeneration of healthy cells. When I say the regeneration of healthy cells, that means like if you've got a mole on your arm, you know, or your body, or tumors, or things like that, it's been proven people have put that on there and used it and it's gone away on animals and people. So really, really consider frankincense. Carrier oils for essential oils. So those are the essential oils list. You can kind of go read them. For carrier oils, please always use carrier oils. I use jojoba oil or fractionated coconut oil. You can find that on the blog too. Herbal remedies, we're going to start on that really quickly. Um, herbal remedies were kind of my very first thing. Herbs are always going to be my thing. I love herbs. I love treating stuff in their first natural format. So herbs are a raw format of healing and that's where I really like to go first. The first one is elderberry syrup. Elderberries are great and they're high in vitamin C, boost immunity. We use, we've used this for years and made it for years. Um, it really does work guys. It does work. You can take it every day as a preventative against flu and cold or you can wait and make it and then take it if you start getting sick. Start taking it every couple of hours and by the next day normally you're fine. It has worked numerous times for us. Uh, that's why we love elderberry syrup. Fire cider. It does put a fire in your belly. Yeah. It's a fermented um, vinegar basically. It has jalapenos, horseradish, you can put turmeric, you can put garlic, all kinds of stuff in there. And it <laughs> it works though. My neighbor introduced me to it and then I made it a couple years ago. <clears throat> and it it's good. It's tasty too. So it helps um, kind of kick out any ailment that you might have coming on in the winter months. Echinacea, we grow echinacea here on our homestead. We also grow black-eyed Susans, which are a little bit more powerful than echinacea, have the same properties as, as echinacea as well. Um, echinacea, it was one of the first herbs that people use as antibiotic, okay? So we know echinacea is great for like respiratory issues, but echinacea and, and immunity and stuff, but it's also great to kind of act as a natural antibiotic. Um, so first of all, if you're allergic to ragweed, please don't take echinacea. It can actually make your symptoms worse. So get that out there. Um, so what can it use? It can be used in the treatment of boils, yeast infections. It can be used immune system, treat infection, cure illnesses. It can heal snake bites, diphtheria, low white blood cell, cell count. It can help with that. Strep throat, anxiety, migraines, indigestion, and so much more. So much more. Echinacea is a must-have. Grow it on your homestead, guys. It's really easy to grow in your homestead. Oregano is another herb we grow here on our homestead, um, simply to cook with, but also because, as I said with the essential oil, it is a natural antibiotic. The reason I grow it is mainly for our animals, though. Okay, I use the oil for us and the herb for the animals. I put it in their water. I put it in their feed. It's a great preventative against any kind of illness your chickens could get, especially chickens. Um, and they eat it up, and we have had healthy chickens for years years. Ever since I started using herbalism, I've read Lisa Steele's Fresh Eggs Daily book. Lisa's also a dear friend of mine and uh, changed my changed my world on herbalism for our animals. Uh, next is peppermint. You've seen me grow peppermint. I did a video on peppermint. Uh, peppermint is great. It's anti-inflammatory. It promotes ease of fever. It's antiseptic and antibacterial. Helps in the healing and easement of respiratory issues, asthma, digestive tract diseases such as IBS, upset stomachs like colic and indigestion, uh, and cracked and chapped skin. Hello. Next is red raspberry leaf. Say hi, Delala. Hi. Red raspberry leaf is great for my, my nursing animals, my pregnant animals, or my animals I'm trying to get pregnant. Uh, it's a very big in um, helping with the reproductive system. Uh, it's also high level of vitamin C, boosts immunity, soothes sunburns, and other skin conditions. Helps in pregnancy, labor, and delivery for humans and animals. Oh, garlic is the next one, which can also be grown easily on your homestead. Garlic is vital for cardiovascular health. It's a natural blood thinner. Uh, it reduces cholesterol, fights infection, promotes good blood circulation. Uh, we also use it to detoxify heavy metals from our bodies. Um, things that we come in contact every day, which can be, you know, heavy metal toxins in our bodies. It's also a natural antibiotic, gets rid of bacteria and other things, so we do put that in our feed for our animals. Um, just be careful when you're using herbs for your animals with the dosage. Turmeric. 
get some turmeric guys turmeric is amazing we keep turmeric capsules on hand so like we'll go to Costco and get the actual capsules um, I don't grow turmeric here uh, we but we do also keep turmeric powder on hand to cook with add to dog food things like that turmeric is incredibly awesome it's anti-inflammatory antidepressant anticoagulant so it can act as a um, aspir as aspirin it has anti-cancer effects, helps lower blood sugar, treats IBS and other bowel issues, regulates cholesterol, and can be used as a steroid for things like asthma and psoriasis. So turmeric's kind of out there, guys. Really add that to your to your medicine cabinet. Last but not least is colloidal silver. Now, if nothing else out of this, check out colloidal silver. It's kind of becoming more and more popular. Um, I, you can actually make it as well. I have not made it, but I'm looking into getting a colloidal silver maker. Uh, so long story short, without giving you the medical terms for colloidal silver, um, it is kind of new to us, which is why I'm adding it to my cabinet this year. But something we're kind of quickly becoming attached to. Uh, it attaches itself to sick cells and bacteria cells in your body or on your body, wherever you're putting it. And it blocks their ability to harm your body. It's antibiotic antiviral, antifungal, and anti-inflammatory. Let me read that again. It is an antibiotic, it is antiviral, it is antifungal, and anti-inflammatory. That's everything you need in a herbal remedy. It can prevent cold and flu, pneumonia, sinus issues, it can cure pink eye and ear infections. It is the miracle of herbs and holistic medicine in my humble opinion. Okay. So that is my quick list. You can kind of go down this and read the blog and go through and print it out and do whatever you want to do with it. You're going to find that uh, each medicine cabinet, holistic medicine cabinet for each family is different because you might have different things that ail you versus what ails another family. Um, your location is different. So uh, you might have to deal with things that another family wouldn't when it comes to health issues. All right, I'm very quickly going to go over these books with you. Very quickly, you can actually check some of these out um, on my uh, bookshelf video I did several months ago. Okay, so the first one you need to check out is Herbal Antibiotics. Great, great books. Teaches you book it teaches you about the basically the antibiotic epidemic that's happening right now in the United States. It's incredibly amazing. Uh, but this is Natural Alternatives for Treating Drug Resistant Bacteria. Superbugs, guys. That's what that means. The superbugs that we've created that we need to get out of our systems all right Peterson field guides they actually make these for different areas so see this is Eastern and Central you got to get one of these okay this teaches you what's wild edibles I cannot stress why wild, wild edibles to you enough this is a great book for you to have uh, according to your region it teaches you what you can pick right in your own backyard it teaches you what you can use it for um, teaches you also what not to pick okay so there's there's little things on here that say don't pick or you know that they're detrimental to animals or something next is the complete herbal handbook uh, you know I disagree with some of the stuff in here but I agree with most of it so that's why I'm showing it to you it goes through it kind of tells you about um, cattle and chickens and all kinds of different things um, calving let's see uh, head sores, talks about the moon, um, all kinds of stuff. Really great books to kind of have and read on your homestead. This book, guys, get this book. If you're really wanting to heal your body uh, from all of the generations of horrible things that have been done to our bodies and our generational bodies, um, this, this book teaches you how to eat, teaches you how to live, teaches you how your body works, okay? This is a really important book to have on your homestead for yourself. It does have recipes in it. Uh, it talks about the um, basically the onset of heart disease and things that are new really to us and how they came about and, and it came from certain foods changing and our food system changing. Great book. Last book I'm going to show you today because this video is going on way too long. If you are serious about herbal medicine and making medicine and tinctures and infused oils and using herbs and water submersion and all that stuff. The Herbal Medicine Makers Handbook. I'm going to link all these below, okay? Please buy this book 
please buy this book and read it cover to cover if you are serious about herbal medicine. This is like, this is like an herbalism course. I mean, it doesn't teach you everything, but it's like an herbalism course in a book. And I think it was like, it was like 20 bucks for the book. Yeah. I, I buy used books on Amazon, so if you go to the link that I have and then click used, you can actually buy it for cheaper, okay? So, I mean, you can probably get this for like 10 bucks on there. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. This is an awesome book. I, I have marked this book up so much um, with different things that, you know, I've just learned and kind of sat down and read it and gone through it. This teaches you how to do herbal medicine, teaches you how to make tinctures, teaches you how to make infused oils all kinds of stuff. Get this book. Read it. Okay, that's it for me today. Hope you guys have a great day. Happy homesteading.